So as of April 2008, the American Heart Association has come out with some new exciting recommendations. Whenever a person collapses outside of a hospital setting, any untrained lay rescuer is now encouraged to get involved in the rescue by doing hands-only CPR. Now, a little bit about why hands-only CPR is so effective. Well, first of all, it eliminates the mouth-to-mouth -mouth res rescue breathing and resuscitative efforts that sometimes put fear in people's minds that they might contract an infectious disease. Now, the second piece of this, and even more importantly, is that some research is actually showing that hands-only chest compressions without interruption may actually be effectively increasing the outcome of cardiac compressions by increasing circulation of oxygen to other cells that normally were not getting penetrated. This is exciting news for lay rescuers who otherwise would not have gotten involved. Now to demonstrate hands-only CPR, we're going to run a scenario and it's going to give you a good idea of what hands-only CPR is going to look like in practice. I come across a patient who has obviously collapsed on the ground and I yell out to the patient, are you alright, are you okay? There's no response. Help, help, somebody help me. Are you okay? Are you okay? There's still no response. You in the plaid shirt, go call 911 and come back. I might need your help. So EMS has been activated or the emergency medical system, whatever is going to be applicable in that situation, and then we're going right into CPR, um, compression-only CPR. There's no signs of life. We find the center of the chest. We place our one hand over the other right between the breasts on the center of the chest, and we begin our CPR compressions about one and a half to two inches deep and we're going to be trying to achieve about a hundred compressions a minute as far as what kind of pace are we doing these compressions at now that's if you think about that that's more than one compression a second so you're really kind of clicking along here elbows are straight leaning over the patient using your upper body weight to do that nice deep compression fast now the american heart association they even have a little bit of comedy going on in that they one of their videos, they lined up the old uh, song, Staying Alive, in order to kind of keep a beat in your mind to keep you on the right pace. I'll spare you my singing talent, uh, but just realize that it's at least 100 compressions a minute. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, that looks really simplified, and it is. That's the whole idea, is to keep it extremely simple, to eliminate the barrier of having any kind of mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact for the fear of disease, and to get people that otherwise would not get involved, involved. But remember, this isn't just a guessing game, and this is the major differentiation for pro-CPR, is that this makes good physiological sense. The more non-interrupted compressions you can get in to a minute, the higher the pulse pressures get and potentially the better circulation of oxygen to vital organs, brain, heart, lungs, pancreas, liver, and we may actually have somebody that has a quality life after resuscitation.